Hello and welcome to another complete Cambridge IGCSE chemistry lesson where you'll learn absolutely everything you need to know on topic 5.1 exothermic and endothermic reactions. As always we'll be following the Cambridge syllabus exactly and we'll learn absolutely everything you need to know for your final exam. Please note I'm only posting around half the topics in the syllabus here on YouTube but if you want access to the entire syllabus you can find a link to my Patreon in the description. Also if you like the slides I use in my videos which can be used as a teaching resource or a vision guide they will eventually be available to download soon after I've finished producing all the videos. Once done I'll put a link to those in the description as well. So chemical reactions can be classified as exothermic or endothermic based on their heat exchange with the surroundings. An exothermic reaction transfers thermal or heat energy to the surroundings, leading to an increase in the temperature of the surroundings. For example, combustion or burning reactions, like the complete combustion of methane, are exothermic as lots of heat is released. An endothermic reaction takes in thermal energy from the surroundings, leading to a decrease in the temperature of the surroundings. For example, thermal decomposition reactions, like the thermal decomposition of calcium carbonate, are endothermic, as heat is required to break down the reactant. Now, exothermic and endothermic reactions can be represented by reaction pathway diagrams, also known as energy level diagrams. These diagrams show the energy of the reactants and products and the energy change as the reaction progresses. In an exothermic reaction, the products have less energy than the reactants because thermal energy is transferred to the surroundings. In an endothermic reaction, thermal energy is taken in from the surroundings, so the products have more more energy than the reactants. Okay, that's everything for core, so we'll move on now to the extended section, beginning with the term enthalpy change. So the transfer of thermal energy during a reaction is called the enthalpy change, or delta H, of the reaction. In an exothermic reaction, the products have less energy than the reactants, because thermal energy is lost to the surroundings, so the enthalpy change of an exothermic reaction is negative. In an endothermic reaction, thermal energy is taken in from the surroundings. The products have more energy than the reactants, so the enthalpy change of an endothermic reaction is positive. Next, you need to define activation energy, with the symbol E subscript A, as the minimum energy that colliding particles must have in order to react. For example, if hydrogen is mixed with oxygen, the molecules collide but no reaction takes place. This is because the energy that the molecules contain is less than the activation energy. However, if a flame is applied to the mixture, the hydrogen burns rapidly and water is produced. This is because the flame provides the molecules with additional energy so that the energy they contain is equal to or greater than the activation energy you need to be able to draw and label reaction pathway diagrams for endothermic and exothermic reactions. So when drawing reaction pathway diagrams, start by drawing a horizontal line on the left to show the energy of the reactants, and then a horizontal line on the right to show the energy of the products. The distance between these two lines is the enthalpy change of the reaction. Draw an upward arrow if the enthalpy change is positive, and a downward arrow if the enthalpy change is negative. Then add another arrow to show the activation energy. Because activation energy is always positive, the arrow always points upwards. Finally, add a curve to the diagram to show the transfer of energy as the reaction progresses. Most chemical reactions involve the breaking down of molecules into individual atoms and then the formation of new molecules from those atoms. The breaking of bonds in reactants is an endothermic process, meaning energy is taken in and enthalpy change is positive. The formation of bonds is an exothermic process, meaning energy is released and enthalpy change is negative. Therefore, whether a reaction is net, endothermic or exothermic depends on how much energy is taken in to break bonds compared to how much is released when new bonds form. If the energy needed to break bonds is greater than the energy released, then it's an endothermic reaction with a positive enthalpy change value. If, however, the energy needed to break bonds is less than the energy released, then it's an exothermic reaction with a negative enthalpy change value. 
Finally, you need to calculate the enthalpy change of a reaction using bond energies. Bond energy is the amount of energy required to break one mole of covalent bonds in gaseous molecules. For example, the bond energy of chlorine gas, Cl2, is approximately 242 kilojoules per mole. The equation for bond energy calculations is enthalpy change equals energy required to break bonds minus energy given out when new bonds form. Let's work through an example. So using the information provided, determine whether the formation of hydrogen chloride from its elements is exothermic or endothermic. The equation for this reaction, H2 plus Cl2 forms 2HCl, can also be written as a displayed formula, which helps us to identify the type and number of bonds. Using the data provided, we can calculate that energy taken in is 677 kilojoules and energy given out is 864 kilojoules. Because energy given out when new bonds form is greater than energy taken in to break bonds in the reactants, enthalpy change is negative and the reaction is exothermic. The answer, minus 187 kilojoules per mole, tells us that when one mole of hydrogen reacts with one mole of chlorine to form two moles of hydrogen chloride, 187 kilojoules of energy is given out to the surroundings. Well done, you've just covered absolutely everything you need to know on topic 5.1, exothermic and endothermic reactions. If you benefited from this video, remember to subscribe to the channel and check out my Patreon, where I'll be uploading the entire chemistry syllabus. Join me there for our next lesson on topic 6.1, physical and chemical changes.